Back in the late 60s, when our conservative Orange County was being shaken by hundreds of long-haired kids, my feeling was dirty hippies, why don't they take a bath? And so one evening, about five o'clock, our doorbell rang, and there was John, the young fellow who had been dating our daughter, and with him, a real honest-to-goodness hippie. Long hair, beard, flowers in his hair, bells on the cuffs of his pants, barefooted. And John said, Chuck, I want you to meet Lonnie. The meeting between the straight conservative pastor and the street-level evangelist was electric. Smith's comments hint that something otherworldly took place when the two met. And Lonnie extended his hand and there was such a warmth and love manifested in his greeting. I was caught off guard. There was an instant bond. There was a power of God's spirit upon his life that was very easily recognized. The church is real small at that time. On Sunday evening, there might be 30 people, 40 people on a good night. And Lonnie made a hit. I mean, my parents, begged him to come back. For a lot of the hippies, he embodied, you know, the, at least the image of Jesus. And there weren't five guys like him. There was just Lonnie. He was the guy you looked to and you said, that's the hippie preacher at Calvary Chapel. The doors blew open at that point and Calvary grew from about 200 to 2,000 in about six months period. And that was the beginning of uh, what is now history. I was brought up in a middle class family, you know, like most of us were, I would imagine. My parents, they worked and they slaved, you know, to put me through college and to give me clothes and to give me cars and, and all the things in life that, that parents bestow upon their children because they love them so much. And being not really sensitive to, to other people's feelings, I spurned their love and I rejected my parents. I thought they were really, you know, old fashioned and they had some outdated ideas and I didn't agree with my parents and I just didn't get along with them. And I started going to college and that was kind of a drag. I went for three and a half years and I, and I was taking drugs at the same time and I was much more fascinated by what drugs had to offer than what school had to offer. It was a lot more exciting from, from what I was thinking at that time. And I was looking for spiritual truth through drugs and I was trying to find out worldly wisdom through going to school. And neither one of them left me very happy. And I was torn between the world and between spiritual things. So I dropped out of school and I pursued my, my interest in drugs and false religions and cults and things like that. And that went on for a while and I got tired of taking drugs and I, I thought I'd try some traveling. So I traveled around the United States and, and I thought that, that I could have real peace and real joy and real happiness if I went to the Hawaiian Islands and went out in the middle of a rainforest and ate bananas and just got away from all the people and all the smog and cars. And, and everything. So I, I just jumped on a plane one night, just thought I'd go to Hawaii, and I got in the middle of a rainforest, 2,700 miles from my home, and I just started crying. I was just so lonely, and I didn't know what it was about. I, I was just at the bottom of a big pit. Like, there was nothing else that I hadn't tried in life that, that left me satisfied. And I, and I was just so lonely, just crying out for some kind of love or some kind of peace. And I came home, about a week after I was there and, and I just wandered around the beaches and, and just looked at people and watched the world as it was falling apart before my eyes, not really feeling a part of it, not feeling that I could do anything to help other people. For several months I was just in a period of, of wondering what it was all about. And then I went up to Calvary Chapel once, this church in Costa Mesa, where it's a hippie church supposedly. And I went up there and I saw just hundreds and hundreds of kids singing and rejoicing. And I sat down among the kids and, and they were all lifting their hands and they were just glorifying God. And, and I looked around and I thought that they're a bunch of religious fanatics doing stuff like that. And they could tell I'd never been there before by the way I was looking at them. Happy 
said, now it is high time that we put off the works of darkness and put on the works of light and walk as children of the light now. It's time. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. And he's knocking right now at your door tonight. Praise the Lord that he has waited this long. Amos cried out in the Old Testament, prepare to meet your God. You know, preparation is necessary to meet God. You can't just meet God as you are. I wouldn't want to meet God just as I am with all of my sin. And I wouldn't want to stand before God except in Jesus Christ. That's the only way I want to face God. I want him to see me in his son, Jesus Christ, no other way. And thank God that's the way I'll be there. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. It's just about over. The time is just about drawing to an end. And Jesus once again is calling you tonight and saying, look, tonight is the night. This is your opportunity. Come in tonight and I will receive you and I'll give you fellowship and I'll let you know my love and I'll fill you with my spirit and with my power and you can be one of these last day witnesses. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these warnings that you've put out all over the place. And what he said was really right on. It really hit my heart and I could see that he knew something and he had a lot of love and I saw all the love that those people had in that church. And I wanted that. More than anything, I wanted that love, and I wanted to experience what those kids were experiencing. They had an altar call that night, and I stood up. I didn't know what it meant to stand up or get saved or anything, but I stood up, and I went forward, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And they gave me a Bible, and I went home, and not knowing what I should do, I went home and started getting loaded and reading the Gospel. And I felt weird about getting loaded. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't doing anything for me anymore. It was bringing me down. So a week after that, it was a Sunday morning, and I was standing in front of, the, of a picture I had in my bedroom of Jesus, and I was looking into his eyes, and I was smoking a number, and a tear started to form in his eye, and it rolled down his cheek. And I, it just really hit me. There was a, just a tremendous silence in my heart and just all around me. And I heard this little voice speak to my heart, and I know it was the Lord. It said, Bruce, you don't need to smoke weed anymore. You don't need to take drugs or do any of those things. So I've given you the peace and the joy and the happiness that you've always wanted, and it's free. All you have to do is just receive it. And all you have to do is just give it back to me and give it to your other brothers and sisters. And from that day on, I just I've just been following the Lord because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I've just been, I've just been worshiping God. And I'm just so thankful to the Lord for, for how much he does love us, for, for dying for us, and, and just making us new creatures and giving us a new birth. today we make the next step you've already come forward to accept Jesus Christ today you make that next step of identification totally and completely with his death with his burial with his resurrection the water is actually a symbol of the grave the old life all of the past to be buried here today as you come up it's in newness of life in Christ to live a whole new life that God has ordered and ordained for you. And so water baptism is a beautiful symbol of the bearing of all the past, the renouncing, the burial, that I might now just really live totally, full on, completely for Jesus Christ. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What Bye. 
ないですか。